Hey there guys, welcome back, it's Maverick here today with another episode of Engage Kiss. So, uh, is this actually the last arc of this season? Don't really know. Um, for one thing, we don't really know if this is uh, the last arc, and heck, we don't even know how many episodes are in this season, right? Well, technically, I believe there are 13 episodes officially announced. Uh, there has been some rumors that there's going to be like a second season, 25 episodes or something like that. So far, I haven't been able to confirm it. I mean, I think it's fairly obvious we're not going to be completing the, uh, the entire story just in 13 episodes. It is, after all, a huge multimedia franchise, multimedia project that they're trying to, um, they're trying to deal develop here you know with a game and all that and comics and you know anime um but i guess we can cross that bridge when it gets there i i still think it's kind of kind of curious to me how exactly they're going to turn this into a game i assume with all the other characters well i guess there were story quite successful story games as well Nah, i'm just gonna leave it at that i probably won't be playing it so um no, any any of you guys know any further information about that? Do let me know. But in any case, uh, where we left off last episode, we kind of had some pretty cliche detective story developments, right? Uh, with the detective just on the verge of having a breakthrough in the case, suddenly getting killed and whatnot, and then the killer turned out to be someone quite close to to uh, our protagonist group, uh, Miles, right, the big dude. So I guess in this episode, I mean, obviously we still have Kisera there helping out, um, helping out the shoe. So I don't really think he's in there any danger but this probably will tie us a little bit further into the main storyline uh once we get into like sort of miles um his own sort of um uh reasons if you will of, of doing this so i guess without further ado let's just get into the episode all right uh i skipped the opening let's begin in the episode directly in three two one play Commonality. Yeah, that's not just enough, right? I mean, he is kind of like personally invested into this situation. So this is sort of like off-screen, you know, off-screen investigation work. This I don't really like as much because, you know, just giving giving this facts to us, you know, some off-screen investigation and all that without actually... Hmm? Oh. Okay, so I guess they're on that car. Wouldn't Kisara just be able to, like, teleport directly to where she was?
Is that really because of that? I don't know, because we don't really quite know Mihal's, uh, his sort of like... We, know, we don't know his motiva motivations yet, so it's hard to really make any judgment call right now. It probably has to do with that mysterious energy, right? No, oh, she's gone. To be expected. I mean, I definitely... I definitely feel that with her character and whatnot, getting out of there should have been a piece of cake. You know, I always thought that these two actually work for different agencies. Sort of like the difference between the FBI and, you know, a, pol a local police department, right? Like LAPD versus FBI. Right, so he probably made a contract with the demons in order to... Save his daughter. Hmm. 
I kind of agree there. <laughs> I would presume so as well. I mean, really, I feel like, if anything, Shu should be able to understand, like, giving up everything else that he cares about just for the ones that he loves, right? For his loved ones. Shu should be able to understand this more than anyone else. And if anything, this, sh this should serve as a wake-up call to himself as well, right? Like, this could very well be the path that he goes upon if he continues like this. Oh, Sharon. Dang, I wasn't expecting Sharon to show up here. Although I guess, to her, killing demons is killing demons, right? She doesn't really care about allies and all that. Nice. Yeah, you can do that later, I don't know. Memories of Asmodo's puppet? No. Oh. Honestly, what you're doing is no different from what Miles is doing, Shu. Sure. I expect the three of the girls to work together, though. No, I have a feeling you guys are probably. Still help take down Miles. Did they ever mention like what rank Kisara is? Like, is she supposed to be also? He killed me. Oh, because all of Miles' memories have been extracted from Shu. Oof. Okay, so I guess Kisara at this point is similar to an A class, right? I'm assuming that if she like,
completely takes like all memories from Shu. She can maybe briefly get to S tier? S class? This is Shu's parents? Hmm. <laughs> is that young Ayano and young Shu? <laughs> so they're actually also like childhood friends as well? Jimmy. Wait, who is that? Who are those other two? Oh, this is Miles' daughter. Obvious. <laughs> right. And so it becomes a question of, you know, this is sort of beneficial to humans now. So do you actually stop? Do you stop the production? Do you stop using it? Or do you take it as a necessary evil? This is the demon. Asmodeus. Hmm. So in the end, he did have some sort of hand in Shoes parents. No, have they really died though? The way that they're talking about this. Well, at least the sister is alive, right? I'm pretty sure that yeah, her, like. Wait, sorry. Okay, so his mom was actually a demon? And so that's why... Huh. Oh, she is asthma though? Uh. Ooh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Huh.
Hmm. Actually, did we ever... Do we... Did we ever get to knowing that Miles was his foster parent? His foster family? Maybe they mentioned it somehow, I just forgot about it or something? I mean, I'm sure that in some way, Miles wants Shu to end his life, right? I mean, to him, you know, the thing that he wanted to do has already been finished, right? His... Okay, now, so here's the question. Is Kisara actually going to tell... I feel like Kisara is not going to tell Shu. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like it's still inevitable, right? He is still... I wouldn't even say indirectly, right? Directly involved with the death of Shu's father and the disappearance of his sister. But damn! Damn! I wasn't expecting that kind of revelation here. Okay, that is that is neat. I'll see you guys after this. Damn, that was a pretty freaking awesome episode, right? I love that we're getting a lot more of the story now. And this rabbit hole goes even deeper than originally expected, right? Like, I think Miles, um, like, his sort of entire motivation one, uh, that was also quite obvious from the beginning. Uh, they made a big deal out of talking about his family, uh, his daughter and whatnot. I figured something like that would be the case where he's really making this sort of sacrifice for his family. Once again, um, I, I think the biggest takeaway from all of that is that this is exactly sort of a mirror reflection of Shu himself, right? This is the path that Shu is destined to walk upon if he continues to do the action as he did here. And clearly, you know, at this point in time, right, even in this episode, he's not really giving a damn about the consequences about that. He's not, it's not really getting into his head how similar he is to Miles at this point, right? Which, you know, I, I feel like Miles calling, you know, out of everything that was said in this episode, Miles calling Shu a little brat probably resonated the most, and, and I think is sort of like the, the truest truth that has been said out of all this. Um, the fact that he can't even himself comprehend that what he's doing is, is exactly what Miles is doing, right? Like, consider it like this. He is teaming up with... Um, he is teaming up with Kisara, right, and then trading his memories in order, and and heck, even everything else in order just for him to achieve his one goal, which is to find out the truth about his family and save his uh, save his little sister Kana, right? Um, and that is exactly the same as what Miles is doing here, uh, where he is sacrificing everything else in order to save the life of his precious daughter. So it's the same thing here. Um, you know, it is ironic in a lot of... To be honest, I don't really feel that bad about Miles' death. I mean, in the end of, at the end of the day, even though he did what he did, he needed to do, it, w it did come at the cost of involving others' uh, families into it, right? Um, and I feel like probably... Here, here's, here's, I think, how Miles, uh, he justified all of this, right? Because I think fundamentally, we would still consider Miles a stand-up guy. You know, the, the first thought I would have is, you know, why don't you just sacrifice your own life to, to, to save your daughter, right? Why do you have to involve, like, another uh, family into this as well? But then I thought a little, about, uh, a, lot of, a little bit about it, and, um, you know, maybe he wants to see his daughter grow up, and, and uh, he wants to make sure she becomes of age and whatnot, and then now at this at this you know, at this time, he feels like he's he's done all he needs to do, and he so he can repay his debt and die at the hands of Shu. Right? I I would presume that that is probably what Miles is thinking throughout of all this. And you know, at the end of the day, you gotta collect your debts, right? <laughs> you you got I mean, sorry, you gotta repay your debts, right? And and Shu has come to collect, um, even if he wasn't 
entirely you know 100% sure of like why he's doing all of this and and whatnot um I, I know this is sort of like a cruel way to think about this, but but the way I I see it, uh, him killing him killing Shu's father and then allowing his sister to be taken away and returned for so that is a debt that he needs to, he needs to repay back, right? And um, you know all these years uh, from from that point to to here, uh, him taking care of of Shu could be in a way you consider that as um, as the interest, right? You give somebody a loan, you got to pay interest as well, and now. We're we're here for the full principal, uh, for the full principal sum of the loan. That's how I look about uh, at this situation. So I'm not really too over uh, Miles dying here. I feel like that's you know he he still has to pay for what he's done to to not only shoot but for all the other people as well. Um, uh, I, obviously, the, the saddest situation about this is, or I guess the most ir ironic situation about this is that Shu doesn't remember any of all of this, but. You know, that's the path that he chose, uh, and clearly this is still too early for him to fully recognize the consequences of his actions, but we'll see about that, right? You know, I, I've said from the very beginning, this is definitely not helping the slightest. I feel like, ultimately, in order for Shu to any, show any kind of character growth, he has to stop this. Uh, he has to stop trading his memories in order to, you know, taking this sort of, you know, nothing else matters, I just want to get to the end of this sort of mentality. Even right now, I wouldn't say that he's really going through a hard decision here, right? Like, sure, Miles is sort of like he's a he's a parent figure to to Shu, but once again, you could, from a more uh, if you look at it more objectively, he didn't need to be a foster parent for him in the first place if he didn't take out Shu's parents, right? So, eh, what what can you say about that? So, I really feel like he's still not really making a hard choice right now. What would be a hard choice later on would be something that truly sort of like what Miles did here, right? No, I guess, you know, to, to be fair, maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh about the situation. It, it's still a little bit different what Miles did versus what Shu is doing right now. Because Shu, at the very least, he's, um, you know, even though you could say he's hurting others as well by er erasing his memories of them, it, it's still not a permanent injury, right? Whereas taking someone's life, that is definitely a permanent uh, injury or, or permanently harming someone else. So it's not quite at the same level yet, but what I'm trying to say here is that Shu is all, it, the path that he's currently walking on is exact alignment with what Miles uh, has done, and so he needs to wake up sooner or later before all this. Hopefully by the end of the season, right? I, I would certainly, even though I said at the beginning that this is definitely not a story that will end in just 13 episodes and just one season uh, I feel like we should at least get some character growth right because so far nine episodes and we have seen zero character growth for for Shu so far and that's kind of to be understandable right we're still just really fully settling in into the events of what has happened before what's gonna happen in the future and and all of that um, and we're still going along for the ride right now. We're still trying to get all the information. So they're really, I would even make an argument and say that the story hasn't even truly started. We're not even quite yet at the starting line here. Like even in this episode, I feel like we're kind of sort of getting close to the starting line, right? Because it's finally revealed who Asmodeus is uh, where, and the, the, the sort of like um, whereabouts of, of Shu's parents or, or his family, if you will, and, and what happened to them. So Shu's father is dead. I think that much is obvious. Shu's mother, Sayuri, supposedly is Asmodeus. I don't know if um, from the very beginning she was Asmodeus or, or she was, I don't know, like, like she, she was later in like taken over or possessed by Asmodeus or, or something of that nature. Um, it, it's hard to say, right? But the, from the fact that they're saying that, that she's saying um, Kana is a result of her and, you know, the offspring of a human and demon, but Shu isn't? I guess that presumes that uh, originally Sairi, uh, you know, Shu's mother was truly just human and later on became a demon? So, so maybe she changed only later on, right? Uh, Asmodeus sort of like corrupted or possessed or, or took over her body later on. That's that's what I'm getting right now. Otherwise, she would be in the exact same uh, predicament, right? But but clearly they pri they place priority. The demons place more priority on Kana rather than Shu because they explicitly mention that Kana is the offspring of a human and demon. So that is a true half demon here, whereas Shu. Not, I guess he's full human, right? And I guess that kind of also answers the question about Kisara. Like she probably is a a full demon. Uh, if you know they're they're making this is if Asmodeus is making this entire thing about uh you know Shu and and 
uh, uh, sorry, about Kana and about her being, you know, her, her special status of an offspring of a, uh, of a uh, demon and human. And, although, I guess they never said it was, the, she was the first? So, they're, like, they could have, you know, we, we could see it. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. We still have too many unknowns here, right? But definitely the review, uh, the reveal of Shu's mother being Asmodia, that was definitely quite a shock. I, I wasn't expecting him to go that far uh, in, in all of this. And, and certainly, I thought Kana would, would probably be like some sort of experiment for the demons, but I wasn't expecting her to be, from the very beginning, from when she was born, already be the sort of like experiment for demons here. So that was indeed quite a... Quite the thing as well, and I love that they're also revealing a little bit more backstory about um, about their their past as well. You know, so it kind of also explains why Akino and and Iono are so close to Shu uh, and why they're helping him so much. So you know, they've known each other since they were kids. Akino was very familiar with Shu's parents as well. Ayano is is literally the childhood friend of Shu and and all that. And, and I guess that's one more, you know. Honestly, I, I I want to say that's one point in her favor, but considering that this uh you know this series the the uh, the sort of like uh producer for the series right um you know uh Maruto Sensei who has a thing against childhood friends you know considering uh you know Sayana heroine um it, it's hard to say right it, it's definitely hard to say here but. Uh, I, I do like this sort of like reveal here about all of this. You know, all things considered, I did like the pacing and, and story structure of this particular episode, right? Even though Miles was, was doomed to have a tragic story from, from you know, from the entire setting and, and all that, I kind of like the way that they handled this, right? Because they're also, in a way, like Miles' death is inevitable, but they're also using this to me, sort of like highlighting Shu's own uh, sort of like... I don't want to say patheticness because I don't think that's quite the quite the word here. But but his sort of ignorance would would, would that be the would that be the, the the correct word here? I mean, I do feel like the the final scene is is kind of um. If, if there's anything I would have to complain about, I feel like the final scene with with Shu actually crying so much openly that kind of sort of ruined the entire thing for me. Like I would have loved it better if if he 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 feels something. Um, is is wrong with him, right? He like he 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 has like one or two tears uh, out of his eyes, and he's just like, no, that's that's weird. Why am I crying? But but they made him like full out start bawling. I don't quite like that. I I did like that final scene atmosphere where you know Shu himself was going on about no, he's a hated enemy and blah 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 and blah. And then you see all the others like Akino and 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 um and and Ayano and Sharon and Kasara as well. They're just being like speechless there and. And, and you know they don't really want to look shoe in his face because they understand you know it's not such a simple situation and I, I wish I wish the final scene would have been just shoe sort of like having you know one having a few tears uh, coming out from his eyes and and being like huh why why am I crying I don't understand this and just end right there right I feel like that would give me a, a to me that would have been a better sort of like composition of of the scene rather than him sort of like like if you look at the final scene here he's like literally bawling his his eyes out um no that that's just a, a slight nitpick if you will but but i do feel that you know i i love the review here i love the review i love the sort of like the, the heavy for foreboding uh, foreboding feeling out of all of this and and you know we, we can see like um you know, even that that forced kiss from from Shu to Kisara here, right? Like once again, it's sort of highlighting uh, the the um, you know how this is really such a bad thing to everybody involved, and yet you know Shu is still walking the path of Miles. He's still walking this path of self destruction, right? And once again, it's hammering home this point, and and I love it because you know the the, the series definitely needs to try to. I feel like this is a good sort of way to, to sort of like point out to to us that you know what what she was doing here is wrong and him being the protagonist obviously he's going to need to change at some point in time but you know when is that we don't know yet at least for right now he's still continuing on right um, I guess one other thing from this episode is in sort of like uh, Mikhail and um, you know what is the what is the situation here right like in regarding the entire like the mayor's family the city and, and all that like what secrets are they hiding I'm, I'm still thinking that it's uh, it's hmm 
I'm, obviously, there's some conspiracy here. Right? I'm still not entirely sure like how they feel about the the mayor's family, you know, the, the ruling family here in this city. I feel I I feel like I'm still uh, at the same conclusion as I was before, and that is that uh, perhaps like one of them or two of them, like like in terms of the family, maybe a few of them are are fully hell bent on on trying to preserve the energy stores at all costs, even if it means sacrificing the lives of others. And some are are kind of like still out of the loop of the situation here, and it's a tough call. It's a tough call. Like clearly, the world, the entire human world, is depending on this energy right now, and um, you know the the what's it called again? Or ornicolium or, or you know whatever the heck that energy is called uh, but uh, obviously it, it's kind of like it's integrally related with demons here so you know how exactly are they going to solve the problem like think about it here right are you willing to have free clean renewable energy for like okay let's not say renewable like free clean unlimited energy for the entire world like even like right, right now and uh, as uh, as just a parallel to to earth that we live in like the real world right like you can get rid of all the nuclear power plants all the coal power plants all the oil power plants all the hydro plants and and solar plants which while being green you know they also do harm the ecological system as well right if we can we, if we can remove all of that free clean energy for everyone at the cost of having one city that's infested by demons Demons and where people, you know, go do their best to 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 fight and 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 repel these demons, and they put their lives on the line and so on and so forth. Would that be an would that be an adequate sacrifice? Would that be something that humanity would choose? It's a hard question, right? It's a hard question, and there's really no real right answer. It once again depends on you know, do you want to um, do you want to sacrifice the, the the lives of a few hundred, a few thousand, for the sake of seven billion people, or or not, right? You know, it's kind of like that sort of situation here, um, and you know, I, I do hope that as as we go on, we don't really go into just a full on, um, you know, being evil for pure evil, right? I like, I know there's demons and all that, but hey, Kisara's here, right? And, and obviously, there are like, you could also argue that. Asmodeus saving Miles' daughter, that's definitely a boon for him as well. You know, no matter like what Miles was forced to do or whatnot, that he was willing to do it. That was a free choice by him. He wanted to do it, right? So uh, I, I do hope that as we continue on, it's not just a clear cut black and white, you know, this is evil, this is good, and, and good must be evil, and that kind of cliche sort of thing. I, I actually hate those kind of things. I much more prefer these sort of like morally gray areas where, you know, it really depends on your perspective on your standpoint and viewpoints, on your values, and, and for that to then, you know, make a decision on what you want, what you feel is the most important, right? That's how I feel about this, and I hope they go something similar to them. Although, I would say, most probably, they're, go, they're, they're still going to have, like, an ultimate, you know, this is good, this is bad kind of thing here. But yeah, anyways, really interesting episode, really like this, uh, so... Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. This has been a longer review than usual, and also a, a later upload than upload than usual. I had some stuff I had to take care of, but hopefully, on the next episode, we will get back on track once again. So, thank you guys. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.